Marvel Review Bike subscribers. Over 400 of you. Who would have ever thought, right? We're gonna look to change out some brake pads. The reason I'm doing this is because, one, I hit a thousand miles. So it's kind of a thousand mile review, partly. And also, the bite is not as great as I hope it would remain on the back wheel. So I'm trying to maybe experiment with a little bit of different types of brake pads, maybe a ceramic brake pad, maybe a little better performance brake pad. So the big question is, am I still enjoying the bike as much as I did before? And the answer to that is absolutely yes. So what I'm gonna do is show you what I purchased and decided with this brand to try it out. I'm gonna try the pads first, see if it makes any braking difference. Uh, and don't get me wrong, the bike still stops on a dime. It's just that you have to use an equal amount of pressure on the front brake and the rear brake. And just like a car, the majority of your stopping power is going to be on the front, not on the back. Uh, that's why you, when you go to change your pad, you'll notice that, uh, especially in any vehicle, you'll notice that the fronts are usually worn more than the backs. This bike, on certain other e-bike uh, e channels, was Fat Bike Tire of the Year for 2021. I think for the value that you get for the cost, I think it's a great deal. I'm a firm believer that you should spend more time enjoying a product that you purchase and not spending time maintaining it or upgrading it. Uh, some people have a hobby of upgrading stuff like cars. Uh, car enthusiasts always want to make the car go faster and enjoy what you got and enjoy the fact that you can be out riding because that's really the whole point of buying an e-bike. Let's get started. So welcome back. If you haven't recognized this uh, area again, this is where I did my episode one of the assembly of the Aventon Adventure e-bike. But today is going to be real simple. It's going to be plug and play. Uh, I'm going to link the description of the brake pads that I purchased. I decided to go with semi-metallic just based on my style of riding and what kind of riding, where I ride, paved roads, flat land that type of thing. So uh, I decided to go with that. I'm going to try it out. If it doesn't work, I can maybe do some sort of ceramic or something different. When you look at the style of pads, look at the ones that were pulled out of the bike and the ones that were purchased. Uh, basically the same style. All right, so if you notice, I got my uh, bike rack over here. I guess we can call that the cheap bike rack. It holds the bike up from the front. We're gonna start with the front brakes here. Uh, what you'll notice is it works similar to a car where you have your two pistons on either side. You have a piston hole. So when I actually took this out, if you could see, this is slightly um, bent. And I bent it back just enough to get it out of the hole. So this was in the hole like this, unbend it so you can pull it out, the pin. And if you notice, these are what were in there. And as you can see, they have some wear that they look, focus here, they have some even wear you can tell, um, but these are the replace it if they get too thinner than a dime. It seems like the one on the inner was a little bit thinner than the one on the outer. So these don't have any particular uh, brand name on them, but it's a style, as you can see, there is a hole that lines up with the pinhole, uh, with the pinhole on the brakes, and then you have your hook here. So essentially this was set up like this. The pin came in there like this. I popped the pin out, and these just essentially came out. So you wanna reassemble the new ones uh, just like the old ones. If you look at the pin here, they sort of sit on the bracket on the inside. They sort of sit like that. And then they flex out a little bit. Now, if you look at the new ones. Yes, they're exactly the same. Um, already uh, oriented with the bracket and 
the way it's supposed to go in. This one goes sort of upside down. You can see the brand name on here. It came in two separate packages from Amazon. Uh, as you can see, the actual pad itself looks a little bit thicker. Uh, about probably, I would say there's probably 30 to 40% left on the, uh, on the old one. So these cost about uh, $10 on Amazon. Not necessarily a brand name, but um, semi-metallic. And if you notice on the rotor, as long as it says that you can't use semi-metallic or if it says ceramic only or any other type, you basically can use any kind on the rotor. So we want a, a kind of a fine line between the uh, stoppability of the pads and the rotor and wearing out the rotors too soon. Uh, an inspection of the rotors look really good on the bike at, just after a thousand miles. So, so what you want to do is you want to squeeze them together, make sure that they stay in like they uh, sort of do. And with the bracket, gonna focus there with the bracket on the outside and the holes at the bottom. You want to just place them right in there. Just like that. So what you want to do, I'm going to leave the old pins in because they do appear to be just a little bit shorter. Um, they're probably the same size, but the ones already bent, so we're going to bend this back. Make sure you got enough bend so it doesn't come out on you. All right, that's in there nice and tight. You just want to make sure you got it in there securely. Now, if you notice on one of the sides of the pin, there's only there's no hole here. There's only the one hole here. So when you slide it in, just want to make sure you got it just like just like that. So now you can see what, how it's put right back the way it was before and we're gonna go ahead and put the tire on right now and make sure that the brakes are nice and lined up there all right so take note that the tire has all its uh, rotors on the left side of the bike so we're gonna go ahead and just uh, reassemble this okay the key there is if you look at the close-up of this that the rotor falls between the two and it's sitting on there now we're going to tie it up with the bolts all right the key here is to make sure that your washers go on and you have a 15 millimeter wrench right here and we're going to go ahead and tighten that up All right, so now we're going to start the back. Uh, if you haven't noticed, uh, when I took the original pads off, I cleaned it up pretty well with some brake cleaner. So uh, if you have any cleaning to do, you get dirt or mud in there, that's the time to be cleaning it. So this is essentially the same thing. You have your pinholes at the top that always sit at the bottom. Uh, this is sitting the other way, but the rotor is right here. The tire is still on, nothing's moved. All I did was pop out the pin, and again, we're gonna use the old pin. The pin goes in towards, towards the motor there. Popped out the pin, popped out the brakes. Again, they come in right in here like this. I'm gonna take off the little tab here where I came shipped, and we're gonna go ahead and slide it in this way and put the, put the use pin in here because this already has it bended it. And these things are tough to bend, so just be careful with that. So like I said, just make sure everything is put together. I'm gonna slide it right on in. Make sure everything looks good. This is slightly bent, but enough to drive it through the holes.
See how that goes nice in there? And it need a little finagling just because it's slightly bent. So we're gonna go ahead and get the pliers and bend it back. All right, so that's all bent back. Very difficult to bend, just be careful when you're bending it. So what did we learn today? Well, number one, I need a manicure. But besides that, and I thought you maybe you'd like a uh, nice bike ride background of the trails here. Project to change out the brake pads is just a general maintenance that you eventually need to do. However, if you're not comfortable in doing it, uh, do not attempt to do it yourself. You can always bring it to a bike shop, but these are the type of things that if you have any mechanically inclined skills, you could probably do it yourself. If you notice here, when I squeeze the brake pad now, the pad is a lot firmer. I took it out, uh, broke in the pads. Initial bite is a lot better. It's like it was just new out of the box again. So somebody was asking me where I got this blue shirt and why I wear it in some of my videos. I actually got this shirt from Mount Piscop up in Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, that would be a really great place to test out an e-bike for going up mountains. So the views are breathtaking. So if you ever get a chance to get up there and, and ride up and go to Mount Pisgah Inn and have lunch up there, go ahead and do it. So with a thousand miles on my bike so far, everything is going smoothly. Uh, the brakes seem to be doing well and the grip is really good as you can see. So hopefully I can continue making videos, get you good content, get you at least a little bit of information, a little bit about the bike, uh, the differences in bikes. Aventon Adventure is certainly a bike uh, that you can take out and enjoy for miles and miles of uh, easy riding. Uh, take it on a long road trip, take it slightly off-road. It's a good versatile bike. I try to answer each and every one of you. So if you did ask a question, I didn't answer it. My apologies. But ask again. I will make sure I get back to you. So until next time, enjoy the outdoors and talk to you soon.